Good evening and welcome to OU Nightly. I'm Jessica Bruno. And I'm Jessica Wilder. A high-speed police pursuit ended in a suicide shooting just before noon yesterday at the intersection of 24th and Main. He has until Monday to accept the $185,000 position. By the way, that's a $20,000 increase over Hendrick's annual pay. How do you not only deal with these fires, but also with the community reacting to these fires? So this that we're making right here is ultimately going to turn into this. He's going to top it into some powdered sugar and sell it for about $5. Right now we're with a water aerobics fitness class, one of the new classes offered by the University of Oklahoma. There's dozens of classes that you can enroll in. Using various photo editing tools such as the one seen behind me, Operation Photo Rescue has been taking storm damage photos such as the one seen here and turning them into these for seven years. It's another Wednesday, another threat of severe weather for central Oklahoma. Mexico City's health secretary launched a campaign dubbed Less Salt, More Health. In keeping with that title, how do you make Make each homecoming experience different, but the same at the same time, keeping yes. with tradition. Like their efforts to protect this rhino, the Oklahoma City Zoo is involved in global conservation projects geared at protecting 54 endangered species worldwide. Meeting someone online is especially easy because it's all at our fingertips. With apps on our smartphones, we could stay constantly connected. And that beautiful blanket of snow we saw this morning is no longer so much a blanket, more like a sprinkling. So we got married in New York. We got married on December 20th um, of 2012. No, 2011. 2011. Oh, see, I'm terrible. <laughs> Spouses Mickey and John make a home in Oklahoma City as they go to school at the University of Oklahoma, a school in a state that does not recognize their marriage. We go to work. We go to school, we come home, we have dinner, we talk about our days, we talk about what we did, we talk about the news. Mickey and John feel their marriage is as normal as any Okies. However, the state does not feel the same. In 2004, voters overwhelmingly approved a state constitutional amendment banning legal recognition of same-sex marriage and civil unions. Because of this, born and raised Oklahomans such as Mickey and John don't feel safe making a future for themselves here. Yeah, I think it's very hard to visualize yourself staying in a state in which your family wouldn't be legally recognized. Yes. I'm trying to just live a pretty normal, <laughs> simple life, um, but the legal issues bother me. However, there are some in the state that want gay couples like Mickey and John to feel as accepted as possible. Norman's mayor and OU professor says she set out a welcome mat for everyone. Um, Norman is uh, very intentional of describing itself as an inclusive community and it is something that uh, we take very seriously as a community. In order to attract a diverse and talented student body to the university, Norman chooses to remain an inclusive community for the sake of economic growth. The mayor can't change the law but she can choose to accept students and citizens in Norman from every walk of life. You know somebody asked me the other day, why did you marry John? And I just responded back because I fell in love. I didn't think about the question going any further than that. And this person had the weirdest look on their face. And it dawned on me that there are people who genuinely do not understand that love is love. Jessica Wilder, OU Nightly. It's crunch time with finals week just around the corner. Many students are studying all night and writing those final papers. So where are these superpowers coming from? In many cases from the study drug Adderall. But most college students are not prescribed. According to statistics, at least 25% of college students are taking Adderall without a prescription. This could mean at least 6,000 of the over 27,000 OU students studying for finals over the next couple of weeks will take the drug illegally. One student says it's really not that hard to get, actually. She asked us to disguise her identity for safety purposes. You just text someone if they have it and then you just go get it from their apartment it's not like I don't really see it as a big deal it's just like okay yeah I have Adderall I have extra and I need some money so I buy it from them and they get their money and I get my Adderall. There are many risks to taking a drug you're not prescribed to though. Um, you could have some underlying medical condition that's not good to take that medication or you could actually be taking other medications that can um, have interactions with it. While students may be aware of some of the side effects, I couldn't sleep, like I had to take it at like 8 in the morning. They aren't aware that they are, in fact, abusing a substance. Anytime you take a prescription medication that has not been prescribed to you for a medical reason, that is an abuse of drugs. 
But will this stop students? Probably not. Obviously, you're not supposed to take a prescription drug if you're not prescribed, but for me, it helps me. And I mean, I've gotten, like, I do well on tests or I get my homework done when I take it. So yeah, I'm not prescribed, but it does good for me, so I'm okay with taking it. Despite the benefits students see around final season, doctors say taking an unprescribed prescription drug is a health hazard. Jessica Wilder, OU Nightly. Oklahoma has always been an agricultural state deeply dependent on water. But ironically, Oklahoma's water that grew crops is now raising a city, and the Chamber of Commerce can't stop talking about it. At the sleek Oklahoma Riverfront, a new U.S. Olympic training center for rowing, canoe, and kayak, and a wondrous new waterfront that welcomes everyone. We created the finest venue in the world for canoe, kayak, and rowing. We held the Olympic trials just a year ago, and I think, you know, that surprises people. It is surprising to think that the capital of a state so heavily affected by the Dust Bowl in the 30s could become an oasis during the current drought. Nationally and even internationally, people don't tend to associate Oklahoma with water. Even though we have a lot of water here, it goes back to the Grapes of Wrath, the Dust Bowl. So what sparked the change? The rediscovery of the Oklahoma River. The river used to be a drainage system that was only mowed annually, but has since been changed uh, to a tourist spot filled with endless was. potential. Many years ago, uh, the Corps of Engineers had... So it went from this desolate area of town where people wanted to actually get away from to, once again, as it was in the beginning of the city, uh, a place for the community to gather. And when you think of gathering places in Oklahoma City, you immediately think of Bricktown, with its restaurants and activities all gathered around the Bricktown Canal. But the place the city really wants to highlight is the Boathouse District, home to the Olympic Training Center. Any time that you see the sport of canoe kayak in the Olympic Games or the Paralympic Games, those are our athletes. But it's so much more than just a training center. It's an attraction and an economic boost for the city that shows an immense amount of wise planning and constructing by city leaders. There is no doubt when someone comes to Oklahoma City, they put their feet on the ground here at the Oklahoma River and at the Oklahoma City Boathouse District. They are struck with a very powerful sense of progress and vision um, and can-do spirit. Can do spirit. That should be the slogan for the once poster child for the grapes of wrath turned beautiful. It's all part of a, of a, of a grander uh, picture, um, but uh, you know when, when you look at, at water and Oklahoman's attraction to it, it's, it's almost magical. Jessica Wilder, OU Nightly.